Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's varsity contest between the Lake City Timberwolves and the Lewiston Bengals. I'm Wes Hess. And I'm Astro Fife. As we joined you guys on Monday for just a single game between the Lakeland and Lewiston boys varsity. What are your thoughts coming into this game now? So Lake City is going to come into this game 11-7. 3-3 three three in conference play. In their last game, they beat Moscow 70-52. And with Lewison, they're going 12-7 overall, 4-4 four four in conference play. And last game, they won against Lakeland 70-52. So the exact same score for each team. And they are very similar. The last time these two teams played was on January 19th. And Lake City came out big, 69-42. But one thing is, they met in a middle school gym and they did not have a shot clock. So we will see if that change of environment and lack of shot clock kind of affected the outcome of this game. And it should be a good one here in Lewiston. Very similar records, just Lewiston playing one more game. And yeah, we are set to go here. It is senior night, sorry we kind of started this live stream a little short. The seniors are Ryland Go. Uh, Hottinger and then we got Jordan Bramlett so just three sophomores and then only two juniors so we only have uh, two seniors next year so that's all I've got that was my pregame analysis here all right we are set to go here now and at Bengal Court with just 40 seconds left to go here on the warm-up clock I believe there will be a national anthem played so during that we'll take a quick break and then we'll be right here for some first quarter action we'll be right back And we are back, the banner's been played, and we are set to go here tonight. So a big game for the Lewiston Bengals and both teams as it's a conference? Yes. Yes, yep. conference game. So this is going to be a good matchup here tonight. 
starting lineups being announced here. As we are set to go here for the iconic Lewiston starting lineup. God's going to cut you down by Johnny Cash. Should be, as you said, a good game. Should go down to the wire. As we are set for the Lewiston and intro. This time, the lights are being dimmed. And here comes the song. Your starting lineup, number four, Jordan Walker. Number 24, Dre Torpy. Number two, Jordan Bramlett. Number one, Ryland Gomez. And number 33, the milkman, Drew Hottinger. Now, I believe last game on Monday, yes, Dre Torpy was out, not suited up at all. Yeah, he is suited up this time, just not a starter again. Royce Fisher is going to stay in his place for yet another game. As I don't know if he's trying to recover from an injury or what, but. So we got Brooks Uhas behind the mic announcing, getting into it a little bit. And here we go. Set to tip off here. Seven o'clock start time. A little bit of a rainy day today. Yeah, I was just going to say that. It's been rainy pretty much all day. It's been stormy, cloudy. Great night for some varsity basketball here. Doing the tipping for the Timberwolves, number 34, Jordan Carlson, a 6'6 freshman. And for the Bengals, number one, Ryland Gomez. Wow, I would have never guessed he was a freshman. Yeah. I, I, was, I was pointing to him, and I looked at that grade level, and I was like, whoa. Wow. It's a tall six, freshman. Six and a freshman. That's crazy. And here we go now. That's a little bit of – I don't really got it until they step to the floor, but that will go to the Bengals' way as that's now to Bramlett. Bramlett gets a screen by Hottinger there as Bramlett kicks it right to Gomez. Now back out to Walker. Walker going to dish it right down back to Bramlett near side. He's going to drive and take it himself. Contact, but – he goes up with a rebound by Hottinger. Now to Walker back to Gomez. Kicks it to Fisher. Fierce side corner three and got it. Great ball movement here. And there's just something about Lake City and Lewis and this rivalry. Just something about it. Something in the air as Walker is able to sink that three in the corner. That's Miller handing it off there to Strawn. Now looking for number 11. That was Watson. And that's going to go incomplete. And Fisher ends up with the ball. Asking for a screen for Hottinger. He gets it. But that's number 11. Watson right there. Take it, battle back now as Bremel with a deep three near side. Got it, back-to-back -back threes for the Bengals. That was a deep three by Bramlett there. That's kind of his hot spot. He likes that right wing a lot. That's Strong now dishing it right back there to Carlson. Carlson drives in, guarded by Rada Gomez. He goes up and good, the 6'6 freshman. Yeah, freshman taking on the senior. They're pretty much the same height, very equally physically, and they able to dominate there is Carlson. Yeah, now I'm not sure. We've only seen the home games, obviously, but have the Bengals really been against this much height before? Yeah, I haven't seen that. They're a very tall team, is Lake City. That's a little pull-up floater, too, there. No good. As that rebound goes right to Hottinger. Contact, but it goes to Hottinger. Bramlett. Top of the key. He's going to drive in a little bit. Still stuck behind the perimeter. Finds Gomez, though, as he's guarded there by Carlson. Gomez hands it off to Hottinger. He's going to go up and he will be fouled. So the first foul of the game goes to the Timberwolves. That foul is on number 11, Josh Watson, with the 6'4 sophomore for the Timberwolves. Yeah, I'm looking at this lineup, and there is only one person under 6 foot, and that is number 2, Paxton Whiney, at 5'9". As well as the Timberwolves only having one senior. So a very young team for the Timberwolves. They did win the state championship just a year ago when Blake Buchanan was on their team. As we mentioned last game, a starter at Virginia. That was a big loss for them. So they're playing without him this year, but looking to battle their way back in this short deficit here in this first quarter. That's Carlson dishing it right there to Arietta. Now back to Strawn. Now to four, that's Miller. Miller, guarded by Walker. 
So he's going to get a set of screen there by number 11. That's Watson, but still Miller dishes it right there to number 13. And that's Arietta. Pot top to T3, no good. There's an offensive rebound, though, by Watson now. So he's going to pull up at the wing, guarded by Hottinger. He go up, and no good on the shot there as Gomez comes down at the board. A lot of good looks by the Timberwolves here, but they just haven't got it, any of them to connect. So far, good ball movement by both teams as Bremont drives in, tries to hit Hottinger. That's going to go out of bounds, and it will go to the Timberwolves. Substitution coming in. Will they get it? Yes, they do. 24, Dre Torpin in for number four, Jordan Walker. That's now to Miller. Miller going to take it down for the Timberwolves. No far, so far, no pressure by the Bengals as a press being called as Hottinger is there to intercept the pass. Yeah, that was just a great read from him. You can tell he does play football. Able That way he was able to catch that ball there. QB1. Yeah, looking like a wide receiver there. Bramlett dishes to Gomez, now to Hottinger. Guarded closely by Watson as he's going to go up and get for two. That's Strawn with the bounce pass there to Carlson. Carlson going to go up with himself. Guarded there both by Hottinger and Gomez, but he gets past them. Not much you can do. Especially for the same height, so it's just going to be a little matchup there. Yeah, that was good defense, just better offense there as Bramlett's going to be fouled. As usually we see a mismatch between Hottinger and Gomez. They usually have, don't have to worry, so. You see a replay there presented by the Diamond Shop. He does get fouled there, so Bramlett is going to go on the line to shoot two, nine to four in favor of Luce and make that ten. And that is four for Bramlett. Now, continuing what I was saying, do you think that's been one of the biggest advantages loose and offensively having that height between Gomez and Hottinger? For sure. Both on offense and for defense. I'd say it has a bigger impact defensively because when those two are in the paint, you cannot get a shot off, especially when you have some shorter bigs in the game. Substitution in for the Bengals. Number four, Jordan Walker in for number two, Jordan Bramlett. That's going to be Miller now taking it down. Still guarded by Torpy. So that's now to Strawn. Strawn trying to find Carlson, but it's going to be incomplete. Intercepted again by Hottinger. Yeah, I'm just kind of seeing a lot of careless passes from Lake City here in this first. That's Hottinger trying to move something up. As that's Walker near side corner now to Torpy. Little lob pass action to Gomez, but it's going to go incomplete and right to Strawn. Now that's right back to Arietta. Now Carlson. Three ball and good. Wow, so Jordan Carlson, as we mentioned, is a freshman, 6'6". He can dominate in the paint and he can shoot threes, again, as a freshman. So Walker's gonna take it himself and he's good for two. Wow. Seen a lot of offense here in this first quarter, 13 to seven, pretty high scoring game. Three and a half minutes to go in this first. Miller's gonna throw it up, but it's gonna be no good. It's a good shot there, but. Just didn't hit the rim. Walker. This is the Torpy now guarded closely by Miller. Now back to Torpy. Excuse me, no, that's Fisher. Fisher now to Hottinger. All in the far side corner now to Walker. Hits Gomez near side corner. He's going to put up a three. No good. Sailed it. Miller with the rebound. Hits. Arietta. Arietta kicks it right back to Carlson. Top of the key right where he hit it last time. But Miller. Strong's going to be double teamed by Gomez and Fisher, but he stays with it now. So that's now far side corner. Arietta for three. Got it. Great ball movement by Lake City there. Finally starting to get their offense going. And just like that, that loose and lead all the way down to just three. So that is a timeout called by Lake City. Half timeout there. Just a 30 second timeout. 30 second timeout. It is your call, Wesley. Hmm. You know, by the time I get over with this, <laughs> yeah, timeout's going to be over. Say. So we're gonna just going to stay here for a bit. So loose to band, playing a great tune. So Lake City kind of struggling on offense in the first part of the first quarter, but now starting to pick it up as we see, yeah, Carlson there. Just a pull-up three. And it doesn't really look like he'd be the type to shoot. But then Walker came down on the other side of the court and took it himself. 
So those replays are presented to you by the Diamond Shop as that corner three was up and good. Really starting to get some momentum on Lake City's offense. So we're going to start off with the Bengals on offense. Jordan Bramlett leading the way. So here we go now. Bramlett's going to be guarded there by Arietta. That's now to Walker, guarded by Miller. Gets the screen by Hottinger's. That's now back to Torpy. Torpy kicks it right back to Bramlett. Now to Hottinger. Hottinger. Going to drive in, guarded there by number 12. That's close. This is Hottinger goes up it, and they're going to call a jump ball. Yeah, that was great hands by Hottinger there, not getting the over the back call and getting all ball there as number 31, Parker Bogar himself is checking in for the Bengals. Coming in for number 33, Drew Hottinger. <gasps> As Lucen is gonna show some pressure here. Lake City able to break it. That's Miller now, Miller. Now kicks it right back to close. Now right back to Carlson. Carlson gonna go with it himself and a little reverse layup action there and good. Yeah, nice spin move there, kinda just able to Move right around Bogar there for two. He has nine on the night so far. Give credit to Golden Steel for running that scoreboard, keeping track of all the points. Big shout out to him as Walker, deep three, no good. Carlson gets the rebound and kicks it right back out to Strawn. Strawn gonna drive and bounce pass right back to close and good for two. Yeah, nice. Lake City really finding their stride on offense. A great ball movement from back to back possessions there. So if you're the Bengals, you might want to try to make it, maybe take a timeout here as Bramlett goes up for two. Fantastic backdoor cut by Bramlett and great job by Gomez recognizing the cut and feeding it into him. Now the only reason I'd say you might want to take a timeout there is if the Timberwolves kept this offensive up because they've been solid so far coming out of that timeout. Yeah, if you're loose and you cannot let Lake City keep up that momentum as that could have been a wide open reverse Carlson. Man. Carlson once again. Wow. They're going to have to maybe guard him a bit closely as that's now 12. Gomez inside the paint. He kicks it right back to Bramlett. Bramlett floats one up and good for two. So the Bengals able to respond so far, but three's going to outbeat two. So. Yeah, tied up at 17. Both offenses looking very solid. And that's Miller now. Kicks it right back there to Arietta. Arietta guarded by Bramlett. That's now to Carlson. Carlson now to Miller. Now back to Strawn. Ten seconds left to go on the shot clock here now. As Strawn might have to put one up. If that's a Miller now. Thought about the three. Pop fakes and up and no good. Use all of that shot clock there. And shot clock turned off. Five seconds here for Bramlett. Three is going to be no good. That will take us to the end of the first quarter. We will be right back with you. Tie ball game here so far. Close one here as we have still have 24 minutes left to play. We'll be right back. We are back for some second half action coming your way. Brought to you by the LHS Bengals media team. Those replays also brought to you by the Diamond Shop. I'm actually rocking one of their hoodies that the owner gave to us right now. Joining a part of that wide out. The student section's theme is wide out tonight. And I came here in Bengal colors. Me personally, I'm here. I didn't even, I wore this to school today. I didn't even know it was going to be wide out, so it worked out perfectly. 
Here we go now, and that's going to be an offensive foul called. Fouls on number one, Ryland Gomez. And yeah, normally you see the defenders planting and taking the charge there. There, Gomez just initiating the contact, maybe extending his elbow a little bit there. The charge. So here we go now. Reese Strawn taking it down for the Timberwolves here, guarded by Bremlin. As Bremlin tried to get a hand in there, but nothing doing. Now to Strawn, deep three, got it. I mean, you really can't guard that anymore. There was a hand in his face, still shot that, that rattled in. Great shot by Strawn there. Timberwolves have looked solid beyond the arc here tonight so far. Yeah, I think the game is going to come down to who has the better defense, who can get the most stops. So we'll see here. Can Lewis and respond as Drew Hunter put one, puts one up, and the lights just got dimmed by I don't know who. And it looked like it might have, <laughs> it might have been, our, might principal. Have been <laughs> our principal. <laughs> Driscoll <laughs> turning off the lights. Who knows? <laughs> and we got that all sorted, and we're going to continue play. As <laughs> Here we go now. That Strong just going to put one up there and no good. Hottinger comes up with the rebound, but a foul's going to be called on number 11, Josh Watson. Good aggressive rebound there. That'll be Watson's second as Shane Parker is going to check into the game. He's got some cool hair, teal haircut there. His little smiley face on the back of his head. I do like it. It's different. Definitely stands out. I do like it. I, I'm Maybe a fan. it's going to start a trend. Maybe we should get buzz cuts and dye hair purple. I, I, now, I don't know if I... Uh, why not? Why not? I, I don't know if I can do... I can't convince myself to do that. I don't know. I mean, I like it, but I, I just don't think I could, I could pull it off. It's definitely a commitment. That pass intercepted there by 24, I, Ian Williams. Yeah, I really don't know who his pass is. He just kind of threw the ball away there. It's close now. Kicks it right back to Strawn. Strawn pulls up with the two and no good. Fisher gets the rebound. Kind of beat his own teammate Gomez there. But he goes right back to Gomez. Gomez dishes to Hottinger. Hottinger goes up with it himself and it's going to get rejected there by Close. And that's number 12. So right. Lake City's defense is really starting to lock in here. Really not allowing Luce in a score. Miller kicks it right back out there, 24 Williams. Now in the corner, Strawn gets trapped. He's gonna dish it right back out there. Shane Parker, is that, he's gonna go up with it, and no good. Bramlett gets the rebound. Bramlett gets a screen by Hottinger. Bramlett steps back a bit, now guarded there by Williams. Bramlett now finds Hottinger. Hottinger's gonna lose it a little bit. Bramlett for three, got it! Jordan Bramlett's second three from that exact spot. Like I said before, that is his hot spot, the right wing there. We'll see. Now tie ball game as Miller takes it right back outside the three-point line. Miller drives in, guarded there closely. Now back to Parker. Parker now back to Williams. Top of the key, almost thought about it, and he's going to be called for a travel. So maybe some momentum shift here for the Bengals if they can get something going on this offensive possession. As Hepburn will now step off, as I believe, was it Walker who came in? Yes, I do believe so. Maybe it was Fisher. One of the oh, two. Either way. They're we continue the play. There it is. As Bramlett's going to drive in, he will be fouled, but he will go up to shoot two. Yeah, you can tell Bramlett wants this game. He wants revenge from that big blowout that they faced against Lake City. Fouls on number one, Shane Parker. He draws his first, just the team's second of this quarter. I almost said first half. That drive in by Bramlett there, he's gonna be fouled. And we've said it before and we'll say it again, Bramlett is known to drive into the paint. He's always been so successful at drawing fouls and, not, and if he doesn't draw a foul, he's been very successful at just scoring the easy layup there, so. We'll see if he can do that here tonight. Yeah, he's definitely really shifty, able to use his speed to his advantage. As I'm not sure what the delay was there, but 
in the backfield is that's number three, Reese Strawn and Walker. And I have nothing doing there. No Mahomey pass. Yeah, that's what Walker is there for. You don't want anyone behind you when you're a defender. Parker tried to do it to Carlson there, but Gomez is going to try to get it, keep it down there, take it his way, but it will stay with the Timberwolves. Just 4.40 left to go here in the first half. Been a tight game since we've started. I feel like it's going to be that in the second half, too. It's going to come down to this fourth quarter. I couldn't agree more, and that's what I can hope for. Always a fun game to call. Yeah, we haven't had really a nail-biter at all this season, really. I mean, we've had some close games, but not like a one-possession game here in the fourth. I would say our most recent game would have been the uh, Vista Holiday Tournament on Championship Saturday, as that's Bramlett. His third three, like I said, from same, that hot spot. Same spot for Bramlett. You just have to get a hand up there if you're guarding Bramlett Strong. there. That's Strawn there, a little floater in and out, and it will go down and good for two. And there will be a foul called. I believe that's going to be on number 24, Ian Williams. Yes, it is indeed. He's going to draw his first, team's third now of the night in the second quarter. And a big shout out to Marty Five here. Thank you, LHS, supporting our class, supporting the LHS broadcasting class. We really appreciate you. And if anyone else would like to give a donation as Bramlett, see that was that far side three. He's not in his hot spot. No. And you can tell there. It's Miller bounce pass right there to Arietta. Now back to Sean. Now Arietta. Near side corner. Arietta drives in a little bit, goes up with the two in. No good with Huttinger on the board. And back to what I was saying, another just big shout out to that donation. If anyone else would like to donate there, you can just donate at that super chat. And we do appreciate those donations and all the support as Gomez is finally able to get some revenge on Carlson there. Gomez is having struggle, struggle guarding that 6'6 freshman able to score there. So here we go now. The Timberwolves now on a five point deficit is strong now, guarded there by Fisher. He's going to drive in. He's going with himself. And good. Sorry, lost my words there a bit, but we're now continuing play as Walker going to drive in, gets stopped by Arietta, now kicks it right back out to Gomez, now right back to Walker. And it's going to be intercepted there by Miller. He's going to have no one by him as he's going to go up with an easy layup. 27-26, one-point game. Here comes Bramlett. Now, I got to say, it seems like the Bengals have kind of had some bigger than a one possession lead, obviously, but it always seems like the Timberwolves are always there to strike back, and they always get it right back into that one possession game. Yeah, and to me, it almost feels like the Timberwolves are in control. Like they, I feel like they control the pace of the game here. That's Parker. Easy layup for him. Yeah, Bramlett tried to gather that charge there, but Parker able to Euro step right around him. A great move by him. Walker now, top of the key. Dishes it to Fisher for a three, no good. It gets the rebound as Carlson. And he's gonna take it out of bounds, so here we go. That's a costly turnover by the Timberwolves, really no excuse for that one. But it will be Bengal ball. I was, I was looking at the other side of the court, just waiting for the ball to come in my sight, but turnover there. And I would say a big factor in this game is going to be who has the lead at halftime and who has the momentum on their side because, I mean, obviously you take an even ball game, but obviously you want the lead at halftime. So we'll see who which team ends up with the lead at halftime as it's now 150 left to go here in the first half as we get a little clips here brought to you by the Diamond Shop. And the Bengals are a third quarter team and I think that, I've said this before, the third quarter really depicts how that fourth quarter is going to go and that momentum and the attitude you have going into that fourth just is very costly. So here we go now. Not sure. We are set to go here after Brooks Malm calls the timeout real quick just to talk a few things over. I'm assuming obviously both sides 
Monthly and a half, but we'll see. And a little confusion on the length of that timeout between the coaches and the refs, but he will continue play with the Bengals on offense. Jordan Brandlett and Bounty. So here we go now after a little bit of confusion there as Bramlett throws a lob pass to Hottinger. Now far side corner guarded by Miller. Bramlett now kicks it to Hottinger far side as it goes right back to Bramlett. Coach Mom telling us players to set up an offense again as that's now Torpy. Torpy guarded by Miller. But he's going to drive in. Kicks it right to Hottinger as Hottinger goes up. Contact but no foul is going to be called and it will go right back to the Timberwolves. And we haven't seen Hottinger shoot a three in quite a bit of time. I don't, I don't know if that was three or four home games ago where it looked like every time he caught the ball, he was going to shoot a three. But we really haven't seen that there. He's really moved inside the paint. After a while, he's been out in the perimeter. So here we go now. Carlson kicks it right back out to trying to find close, but that's going to be intercepted there by Gomez. 29-28, your score right now. Bengals in the lead. Gomez kicks it to Hottinger, far side corner. He's going to drive in a bit. He's going to go up and he's going to get rejected there by Close, but it will stay with the Bengals. Yeah, Hottinger really not used to the physical presence in the paint as you see that replay by the Diamond Shop, an electric block there. Tondra gets rejected again. Not something you see every day from the 6'5 senior. He's usually able to get those shots up easily, but against this height, he's going to struggle tonight, I feel like. Yeah, he's just used to backing defenders down and just dominating in that paint with that size difference. So here we go now. As we see right there, you can see Hottinger was right next to Carlson, Jordan Carlson, and it looked like just a normal matchup as that's Fisher for three. Got it. Fisher's second three also in that corner, so... That might be his hot spot. I know he has got sh quite a bit of threes in the corner. Big shoot, big time shooter here for this Lewiston team. Tim Wolves down by four with just 25 left to go here in the first half as Miller's wide open, top of the key, got it. Make it a one point lead as Mom will call for our last shot here, I can just assume. And I know you said this, but just Lake City's doing a great job of sticking with them, always responding to their points. With just six left to go here, as Hottinger's beyond the arc, no good. Strong might have a chance to put one up, he does, and no good. Ooh, almost. So that will be the end of your first half. A thriller so far, 32-31. I think this is the closest game we've had so far, and we are excited for this second half action. And it has been a very fast-paced game. This first half has really flown by. And we are going to head into halftime. Lewiston 32, Lake City 31. Now this halftime will be brought to you by the Diamond Shop and Shop and Shop. There it is. So we'll take a quick little short break here. We'll be right back with you. Ten minutes of halftime. We'll be right back.
And so after halftime. Brought to you by the Shop. And Shop and Shop. It is loose in 32, Lake City 31. Very evenly matched game, almost as evenly matched as you can get it. And it will start off with Lake City basketball. And we couldn't have asked for a better start as commentators of this game. Close game so far. Can it stay? I definitely think it will. It'd be, it'd be pretty nice. It's just going to come fun. down to the defense of both sides. Who can get the most stops? Who can make the most shots here on offense? Lake City ball. And before I get into the game action, I want to give an apology to Mr. Driscoll. He did not turn off the lights. Or he so he says. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he came sorry, up Mr. to me. Driscoll. He, he made sure he wasn't the one who turned off the lights, but I don't know who did it. It's a mystery, so. So let's get back to the action now. Carlson goes up with a two ball, and yeah, no good. Go, rebound goes right to, I believe that's Watson, yes. And a travel will be called. So it will go to the Bengals. And that was the pressure from that loose in defense causing that travel there. Great defense by Leif Gomez was guarding him there, forcing that travel. So here we go, opportunity for the Bengals to strengthen their lead here as they're only up by one. As Brennan bounce passes right there to Hottinger. Hottinger kicks it right back to Fisher. Fisher looking, he's gonna drive and throw it up on himself and no good. Kicks it right back out to Fisher. Walker for three, got no good. Gee, I, I messed about everything up right there. <laughs> you thought, I thought he got it too, but. Oh man. Okay, sorry, the 10 minute breaks always get to me. They, they mess up my groove. I know, yeah, if it's kinda like at the start of a game, you just have to get your groove going. And I think that's the same thing for the players too. They have that long break and they just need to get into the groove of everything. So they're definitely not the only ones feeling it, Wesley. Thank you for that, Asher. <laughs> really. As that's now Watson at the left wing as he goes up for two and no good. Rebound by Gomez. Walker loses it a little bit there, but he kicks it right to Fisher now. Fisher now to Bramlett. Bramlett might try to drive in, kicks it right back into Walker. He loses it, but it goes right to Gomez now as Bramlett's there. Maul right behind him, telling him probably something. I believe he was talking to Gomez as he lobs it right over there to Fisher. Fisher, bounce pass to Bramlett for a three. Electric th player here, Jordan Bramlett here. Is that four threes? I think that's four threes that for the game. Four threes. Make Puts that him at 20. 20 points on the night. Wow. Just the start of the third quarter, too. That's now Carlson near side three. Got it again. And I think that's three threes for Carlson as well. I don't think any of them have hit the rim either. They've just gone straight into the hoop. Electric player. He's young, he's tall, he can shoot threes, dominant in the paint. Lake City is lucky to have him. It's Fisher, dishes to Walker now, Hottinger. Near side three, got it! Hottinger gets the three ball there. I haven't seen him from him in a while. I know, I mentioned in the first half exactly. we didn't see him shoot those threes. He had one attempt in the second quarter and he sinks one here in the third. That's Strawn driving in, he responds. 38-36 so far here. Bramlett gonna reset. Three people behind him, now they're all in front of him. Bramlett, spin moves, goes up with it, and no good. Watson gets the rebound. It's a great move by Bramlett there, just too strong on that lay-in. And Strong tried to go with a pull-up three there, but it's gonna be no good as Walker gets the rebound. Those pull-up threes are very hard to shoot. Bramlett. Guarded by Miller, kicks it to Fisher. Thought about the three, pumps fake, goes, this is right to Hunter and an one there. So momentum on the Bengals side so far. This second half. Great job by the milkman, Drew Hottinger, battling in that paint, scoring that bucket and the foul as you see the replay here inside to Hottinger. That pass from Fisher. As Josh Watson draws his third on the night, 6'4 sophomore. Hottinger, one and only up and no good. Carlson gets the rebound for the Timberwolves. Hottinger kind of had a quiet uh, first half. He was really struggling in the paint, but he's really finding his groove here in this second half. Strong dishes right back to close to Carlson. Good ball movement, but it's going to be no good on the way up there as Gomez ends up with the rebound here. Hands off to Fisher. Top of the key now. 
Fisher, bounce pass to Gomez, guarded by Miller. Gomez gonna go up with him himself and good for two. And that a timeout a now will be called. It will be a full timeout. Here we go. Bengals on top, 42-36. Just a great hesitation move by Gomez there. He kind of acted like he was going to start and start backing it up, and he just exploded to the rim. As you see that three from Bramlett, explosive here. I don't know if that was a 30-second or a full timeout. Full. A full. Full timeout. So, so far, Bengals looking rather spicy to start off this second half. We'll be right back. We are back now after the full timeout called by the Lake City Timberwolves as the Lewiston Bengals. Good shot of the student section there, as I said, it's wide out. As you see that back of the student section kind of lacking that white, but the first three to four rows are very solid white. You know, it appeared last game that there was no student section. But it was, I heard from after the game, they were actually dressed in camo. Oh. And they were actually there. Yeah, there, there so, it is. Yeah. There. That's Arietta now. Turn out to the corner and dishes it right back to Miller. Top of the key guarded by Hepburn. Gets a screen by Strawn. Arietta. Miller had an open lane and he will be fouled. Shooting two now. And yeah, on the ground. So he was passing that out. Not a shooting foul. That foul is going to be on number one, Rylan Gomez. You see the instant replay here. Definitely going out behind the arc and not up for that shot. So good call by these officials as Walker and Fisher are gonna take a seat. So here we go now. Strawn dishes the close. Now right back to Strawn. Strawn cross court pass all the way out to Arietta far side corners. He thought about three, didn't take it though. Pumps fakes and it sets it right back out there to Miller. Miller. Gonna step right back, back out beyond the arc as Miller dishes it right back to Carlson. Carlson might have an open lane here. He's gonna drive in spin moves, goes up with it, and good for two. Carlson just showing off his footwork there. And wow, that puts him at 17, leading scorer here for Lake City. Gomez gets it now. He might have an open three. They're not gonna guard him though as Atburn kicks it right to Gomez, far side three. He's gonna take a three ball and good. I don't even know if Gomez jumped on that one. It really looked like he was going to lob that in for a pass, but shot that three in off the foot of Miller there. And maybe official review. I don't know if we can get a quick replay of that. Maybe. And it will be overturned to the it Timberwolves. Will. And great job here by this media team. And yes, it does believe, look like yeah, off yeah. Hepburn's foot. So good call as you see that replay. Hits the right foot of Hepburn. It's Carlson again just dominating that paint in and up for two. 19 points for the young fellow. 45 40 your score so far. 254 left to go. It's Hottinger. Corner three. Got it. The Bengals respond there. So two threes from Hottinger here in this third quarter. Normally he doesn't shoot those. And he is just electric here. So between Bramlett and Hottinger, they are lights out from three. Miller now has the ball, kicks it right back to Arietta. Arietta now to Carlson, top of the key, guarded by Gomez. Arietta might have an open lane, gets double teamed by Hottinger and Gomez, but he still gets it in there. Yeah, I mean, the key for Lake City here is just give it to Carlson and he'll do the rest. Bramlett now looking, can't find anything, just gets it to Hottinger. Hottinger, far side, looking to find find someone, goes under the hoop, but he gets intercepted there. Right strong there, great effort there. Wow. Yeah, and that was just a forced pass by Hottinger there, but do give credit to that Lake City defense. Strawn dishes it right back to Arietta. Arietta, near side corner. He's going to dish it right back to Strawn now. Strawn going to get double teamed by Hepburn and Hottinger. He's going to dish it right back out. Now finds closest. He's going to go up for two. 
Lake City doing a good job of dispersing that ball. And I don't think Carlson touched the ball in that possession, so good job by them distributing it. So far, neither team really putting a major press on as Torpy tried to go up for two. And I believe now that one will be a shooting foul. See a replay there, drive by Torpy, taking it all the way. Ooh, I don't know about that one. You see a nice replay here. Goes up. Ooh, that looked clean to me. Ooh, I don't know. Either way, Torpy. Great shot. Line. Great shot by that media team. They're just getting better and better at those replays. And Walla. Walla were during this little free throw break. Let's give a shout out to everyone behind the scenes. We got Jackson Long right under giving you that shot you see right now. Behind the camera, we have Kai Klempel up top. Doing the wide shot as the camera you see right now. Yep. Got Brandon Holderbaum on the tricaster. Forrest Delka on the replay, as you saw right there, that foul. That looked rather clean, and that's going to be a charge call. So here we go. Momentum so far on the Bengals' side. And Gomez notorious for taking those charges. You see the replay there. Did he get his feet set is the question. Oh, wow. Another close call. I don't think he got it set. But it's the question is if the offensive player kind of leaned into it and created that contact. Another close one, but that in favor for the Bengals and a jump ball. So great defense by Miller there. One on one against Bramlett. Bramlett normally just able to go right past that defender, but got tied up there. So there was the first pressure we saw put on by either team from their side of their own court. See a replay there, just great presence by Miller. As Bramlett now guarded by Miller. Bramlett kicks it to Fisher now. Fisher right back to Bramlett. Bramlett now to Gomez at the wing, trying to find someone, dishes to Fisher for a three. No good. So that's going to be a rebound by Watson, now dishing it to Miller. Bramlett right behind Miller, but nothing doing there. As that's now strong, deep three, beyond the arc, and no good. So he's going to get his own rebound, keeps it inbounds, but it goes right to Gomez. That was a great box out by Fisher there, even though his defender almost got that rebound. And great hands there by Miller to deflect that pass, and it goes right to Watson. Close dishes it right back to Arietta. Now to Watson. Watson trying to find someone. Dishes it Strawn. Strawn might go for a three here. Nothing doing, though. Bounce pass there. It's going to inter intercept it by Gomez. So he throws it ahead of Fisher now, as Fisher might try to slow it down, and he does. Hottinger. Now to Fisher, thought about the three, didn't take it though. Shot clock is turned off. So here we go now, Bengals can lengthen this possession here and just take it to the last shot here. 50 to 44 right now. Bramlett gets a screen, he's gonna drive and take it himself and good for two. Just an explosive play by Bramlett there. Bengals extremely patient on that offensive possession and that resulted in that last second bucket. So the Bengals with a very, very solid third quarter. I think that's the best quarter. I have seen all season from these Bengals. And let's go repeat what you said. You said the Bengals shine in the third quarter. And what we saw right there is a prime example of the Bengals shining in the third quarter. Lengthening this lead to eight. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Math isn't that good. But here we go now. As you were saying, just a prime example. Now, the question is, are they going to be able to keep this up? Yeah, that, that in fact is the question because between Carlson and a bunch of these other players like Miller on defense and Parker on offense, there's just a lot of explosive players on this Lake City team that can just shine at any given moment. And so it's if you can allow those players on Lake City to shine, then you might be in trouble. But as long as you keep on logging down on defense, and knocking down shots for the Bengals, then they're gonna be just fine. So here we go now. It is time for some fourth quarter action coming your way here. A good here. shot of the band. They've been great tonight. Last game, maybe. Yeah, I'm not really sure how that's gonna We're not work out, but yeah. all that matters is a Bengal win. And they will go from that. So here we go, fourth quarter. 
starts. Now, here we go. Strawn to Miller, guarded by Walker. Miller telling Carlson where to go as that's Watson now. Watson trying to find someone, gets it right back to Miller. Bounce pass back to Watson, dishes it to Carlson, an easy layup for two for him. Yeah, that's just too easy there. The Timberwolves just doing everything they want on offense. Not much restriction on that Bengal defense. Walker dishes it right to Hottinger, and he could have maybe, maybe put it down right there, but he just goes for an easy layup. And that's the same thing there. The Timberwolves just kind of breaking down on defense, so both sides on defense kind of struggling here early in this fourth. Strawn goes with the three ball, no good. Hottinger ends up with the rebound now, as that's now Gomez. Gomez dishes it to Fisher. Fisher for three. Got it! Here we go! Great shot, clutch three from Fisher there, extending that lead to 11. You don't get much clutcher than that from Fisher. 7.06. And he just Left had to, to plant go. his feet there. That pass from Gomez right on target. And just clutch from Fisher there. Here we go. I think we're in for a good one, Asher. I don't know about you. But right, I'm getting excited. Jacket might have to come off. Lewison with a nice lead. 7.06 to go here in this game. Get a good shot of that student section in the cheerleaders. And a shout out to Braden Chenault. Giving a shout out to the replay man for Stelka. Yeah, the replays have been on point tonight. We have seen a lot of close calls and <laughs> just very nice replays. Two close calls that we have gotten confirmation on from the replays and they've just been stellar tonight. Only gonna get better as the games go on. So here we go now after the timeout. Bengals showing some pressure. Clutch three by Fisher. So we are set to go here. Miller dishes it right back to Arietta. Now to Strawn. Strawn. Travels under the hoop right to Miller. Far side, corner three, no good. Sails it a bit, but it's gonna go get tipped up there as Carlson ends up with it now as that's now right back to Arietta. Arietta. At the top ski, dishes it right back to Carlson now. Carlson, guarded by Hepburn there. Is he going to go for two and no good? Hottinger gets the rebound. Freshman on freshman, this time Hepburn coming up with the win on that defender. So a rare miss by Carlson, but it will be go to Bengals now. As Gomez puts up a three, that's going to go a little bit left there. But Miller stays with it now as that's now to Strawn. Bengals now going to retreat on defense. Strawn might have an open man. He goes up with a little foot shot there. No good. Gets his own rebound, though. Strawn. Looking. Can't find anything. To it himself here is now to Miller. Miller going to drive in. Tries to find Watson, and that's going to get tipped up there. And it will be a jump ball, and I believe last jump ball went to the Bengals, so it will stay down there with... You see a replay there, just kind of lost the ball and everyone kind of making a dog pile there. I was wrong. It's going to go to the Bengals. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Again, all replays are presented to you by the Diamond Shop. And Lake City just, now they're bringing more pressure. They've been sticking with that one-man press. Bramlett waving Hepburn off. He's going to take it one-on-one. -on -one. He gets past the half court line, uh, now finds Hottinger. It's Hottinger going to look, finds Bramlin now. He's going to go up with it, no good. Watson gets the rebound and a foul will be called. Contact by Ryland Gomez. That will be his third personal. But 5.53 left to go here. Neither team really in foul trouble. No, it's been a very clean game. No team has been in the bonus at all. So with just one foul with 5.38 left to go here. Bengals, no need to worry about that just yet. As Strawn drives in, kicks it out to Miller. Far three, no good. Hottinger gets the rebound. And I don't know if Lake City normally makes those threes. I think they do because they are very confident 
but they've just been off the mark tonight. Splendid looking, kicks it to Fisher. Fisher, pump fake, goes up with a two in, no good. Gets his own rebound though at the free throw line. Now to Hepburn far near side corner. Kicks it over to Fisher, it's gonna be intercepted by Watson, he's all alone. Hepburn's down court with him though. He goes up and good for two. So Hepburn probably trying there not to draw a foul. As yeah. that sometimes is what we usually see, not just by him, but any of any fast break situation is usually contact. I don't know if the uh, hoop mics picked that up, but after Fisher got that pump fake and the defender fell for it, the student session gave some ooh and oohs and ahs as Bramlin misses that. Hottinger with an offensive board. So we go, that's now back to Bramlin. Bramlin got to reset it. 25 left to go on the shot clock. Has time to set something up. As Miller will draw a little bit closer to him here now. That clock is their friend if you're the Bengals. Bramlett was wide open in the paint. Hottinger saw it, but he just misses him by a bit. Yeah, that was a very good look. I definitely saw the thought process of Hottinger there, just unable to deliver it. There you go. Yeah, you see replay. You look at Hottinger's eyes. You could definitely see it there. He's not able to deliver it to Bramlett. Bengals with some pressure as Walker's there, but he's going to back off a bit. Make sure he doesn't get behind. Strawn. This is to Watson. Watson gets a screen by Cools. Now back to Strawn. Strawn, lob pass to Watson, and no good for two as that's rebounded by Hottinger. 57 48 here with just 3.56 left to go in this ballgame. Yeah, Lake City has just been kind of looking off in this second half on offense. Walker. This is to Hottinger, now to Fisher, near side, corner three, no good, and it gets rebounded by Gomez, though, is now back to Hottinger, now back to Walker, now back to Bramlett. And this is almost the best case scenario if you're the Lewis and Biggles missing those shots on offense, getting your own board, and that resets the play clock, they can waste more time on offense. So they can run this down to about just above three minutes if they do so here, as Walker just is now to Fisher. I mean, don't get me wrong, you definitely want the best shot possible on offense, but definitely not a bad decision to milk this shot clock to just seconds. Five seconds left to go here, they're gonna need to put one up. Now to Hottinger, he needs to put it up now. He goes up with the three ball, and good! Hottinger's there on the three! Contested by Watson in his eye. That, that's gotta be a career high for Hottinger there. Three three-pointers, wow. 18 on the night for Hottinger. That's Strawn, could he respond? No good. Offensive rebound by Carlson, no, no. Right back to Strawn. Strawn dishes it now to Carlson. Carlson for a three, got it. And now a 30 second timeout will be called by the Lake State Timberwolves. So 60-51, your score right now. So don't count Lake City out when Carlson is on your team. He's got 26 for Lake City. More than half, of, or just at half of their points. And here we go. Just a nine point game. It feels like Lewiston is in firm control of this game. And that time out there just ends. So I mean, the major question we have here is if the Bengals can keep this up. But like you said, we all know Lake City, we've talked about it before in the first quarter. Anytime we said it seemed like Lewiston had the lead, which they do, Lake City found a way to respond every time. It's just been, it's been a while since they found a way to respond here now with just 2.44 left to go here in the fourth quarter. So we've got a three possession game. Three threes will tie it. And Carlson has yet to miss one, I believe. So maybe if I'm the coach, I'm gonna switch the pace for the Bengals here and I'm gonna start attacking more than just wasting the play clock. Walker, a long pass to Gomez, now to Hottinger, top of the key. Now fine, try to find Gomez, but it will go out of bounds. So a costly turnover. Yeah, back to back, off the mark passes for Hottinger. He's really known for zipping those passes in there and being on the mark, but I don't know if it's the pressure of the close game or what, but just unable to deliver those passes. That's Miller now, dishing it to Strawn. Strawn now finds Carlson. He's gonna go up with it and good for a two. Just a nice soft touch by Carlson there, able to softly lay it up and in, and that cuts the lead to just seven. So here we go now, Bramlett. Just is right back out to Fisher. Fisher known to be good at the behind the arc. Walker dishes it to Gomez. Gomez. Lost his dribble. 
He's going to do a little move there, and good for two, an aggressive play by Ryland Gomez, but it goes in for two. It looked like he was just going to dish that off and kind of give up, but he realized he had a pivot foot, so he used it. Good long stride there by Gomez, able just to rip to the hoop. Strawn, 20 left to go on the shot clock here. A slower offensive possession for the Timberwolves. Yeah, That's Parker. Really taking their time as a foul will be called, looks like, on Walker. Foul's going to be on number four, Jordan Walker. I'd like to see some more urgency from Lake City there. Yeah, he only got a minute 29. 89 seconds. Nine point game, only three threes, so definitely doable. Strawn dishes to Carlson. Carlson now back to Strawn. Shot clock reset, so they have 20 again. Strawn going to drive in. Kicks it right back to Carlson for the free throw in. Good for two. I mean, Carlson is just automatic. That puts him at 30 for the game. Every time he catches it, he can shoot, and he makes it every single time. So Lake City has set themselves up for success, stopping the clockwise as they've drawn zero fouls this fourth quarter. So they have four to give up. Yeah, definitely start doing that. Good point to bring up. That definitely stops the clock. Like you said, they have five fouls to give up. So. Definitely start using those. Definitely go for the ball, go for the steal, but timeout called by Lewiston. So, full man. timeout. And why don't we just take this timeout with them? We'll be right back for the rest of this 48.1 second thriller. We are back here after that Bengal timeout. It's going to start off with Fisher taking the ball out of bounds. So that's Gomez. Now to Brantley. Brantley going to drive in. He'll go up with it and no good. Off the three with my hot turn and add one there. And this crowd erupting. Is that the nail in the coffin for Lake City? See a replay there. Brandley with that full head of steam. I didn't even notice that. Pottinger able to clean that up a little bit and get that foul and one. Chance for a three point play. 41.9 seconds to go here in this game. Lake City's going to need a miracle. Pottinger converts the and one, and Hepburn is going to check into the game for Fisher. That's now Carlson under the hoop for the Timberwolves. So they have 40 seconds left to go here now. Is there not? The key for this Bengals success is just their success beyond the three point range. They've just been lights out tonight. So Carlson drives up and it's no good for two. That's not a strong. They only have 25 seconds left to go here. So they got to put something up here quick. And Strawn drives in, no good again. And now that's close, but now up again. Lake City wanting a goaltend there from that Gomez block. So they're going to call a timeout before time expires with just 11.7 seconds left to go here. So that looks like it might be a wrap. Lewis in 65, Lake City 57. And before we talk about the game, a shout out to the cheerleaders and the band. And everyone here, the spirit squads of LHS, the spirit of LHS, the cheerleaders, and the band. Yeah, are showing out each gone. and every night. And a hint here, a little teaser, the cheerleaders hosting districts this Saturday, February and 10th. Guess, guess what? It is all covered here on the LHS YouTube. That is right. We got you covered for that. And if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, 
on a long road to 2,000 subscribers. We just got 1,000. We are currently at 1.12. And we just really appreciate all your guys' support watching each and every night. We have something on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Just halfway done with our marathon week. So I, Lake City's out of their huddle. So I can only assume we're going to see an immediate foul or maybe just a dribble out, I think. Yeah, it just depends how aggressive the Lake City head coach wants to be. James Anderson, I was looking for his name. How aggressive James Anderson wants to be. And I don't think it's very likely for Lake City to come back, so... Anderson is telling his players three fouls to give, so it looks like they will be fouling. And I've got to say, I do like that aggressive. So maybe if you're the Bengals, you're just going to try to get immediate passes here as Gomez heads down, and it looks like it's going to be a uh, – so they're going to call a travel here with just four seconds as – I believe it's going to be the substitution thing. Yes, it is. So Parker Bogar checks in, and Bramlett checks out for the night. And, yeah, all the players showing their respects here. As Gomez now checking out, and in for him is Drew Aldridge. Everyone kissing the Bengal. All of the seniors as Hottinger is next. And... An incredible job by these seniors this year. As we are hearing some news from the student section. Milkman Hottinger has a dribble out. Will happen, and that is going to be a wrap. Loose in 65, Lake City 57. Bengals have been lights out from that three-point range. That is key to that Bengals' success. Just an excellent performance here tonight. Yeah, I would say the biggest turning point of this game was, in fact, the third quarter. I mean... Bengals really found themselves coming into the fourth quarter up by eight. So I led them down the road as they pull off the victory here tonight. 65-57, your score. And uh, just looking at this Lake City roster, one senior, and as we mentioned, number 34, Jordan Carlson, such a bright future. I mean, he dominated this game as a freshman, 30-point game. Excellent performance as we get a close-up of this student section. Going out in the white. And that is going to do it for us tonight. Again, Bengal victory. Lewis in 65, Lake City 57. And before we totally end things, tomorrow, what's tomorrow, Asher? It is White Pine tomorrow. And what's on Friday? That is going to be wrestling. And on Saturday, district cheer. And White Pine. And White Pine, all this covered on this YouTube channel you're watching on right now. So thank you all for joining us tonight. We'll see you either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Or all three of them. Or all three. You enjoy watching. All right, I'm Asher Five. And I'm Wes Hess. And it is a wrap tonight. Everyone drive safe who are here. And good night. <laughs>